Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets tutorial. In Practical Sheets, today we are going to do a drop down, but a very special drop down. It is multiple selection drop down. What do I mean? This is not an option in Google Sheets right now, but we're going to create the option with a bit of Google Apps Script code. I have here some simple drop down. I create it with a list, and if I choose doc, here, I'm going to have as a value doc. The neat thing here is that if I choose then wolf, here, I'm going to start putting it with a comma as a multiple selection. And if I choose doc again, I don't have duplicates, but you can choose if you want duplicates or not. That's it. That's what I'm going to do. I know you'll like it, but before going to the video, you can head to practicalsheets.com or to my Patreon page to find the template, the codes of these and the more than 60 videos in the channel. Thank you so much. And let's begin. So we begin with an options table that I've already pasted here with whatever you want to display in your dropdown. Then here you're going to have the dropdown. However, since there is no way currently in sheets to do this um, directly. For now, I'm going to separate it in two columns till I find a better way. The first one will be the dropdown, and the second one will be the selected values. So here you'll choose dog, and then if you want wolf, and then if you want raccoon, and here you'll get the comma separated list. So let's do first the dropdown. This is easy. Data, data validation. This from a range, I'm going to choose this range from A2 up to A. So I leave option to include further values in the future, further animals in my case. Okay, I'm going to leave show dropdown checked. I'm going to check show warning. I'm going to save. Let's go to table and see this is working. Then I'm going to duplicate this up to the last row with control shift down and then control D to duplicate it. Control up to go to the second row. And this is where the fun is going to start. Going to extensions and up script. So the first thing I want is that when I select any value, then I'm going to paste it here. This is not so difficult. I'm just going to do first a multiple selection function. And I need to record in which cell the user has just typed something or selected something. For this, I'm going to go to my method get active range. And I'm going to store it in a variable with the name you want, but I'm going to name it active cell. Now I've already got the cell, but I need some information about the cell. Mainly, I need the column, the row, and the value, and also the sheet. Let's start with these three. So this is active column. Then I'm going to need active row. Then I'm going to need active sheet. So active column, I'm going to get it within my active cell with the method get column. The same for row, but with the method get row. And active sheet will be active cell dot get sheet. Finally, I'm going to need the value. There are two ways to get the value. The first one is with this active cell get a value. For now, we're going to use this. Okay, I have my active uh, information. Now I'm going to compare it with the information I need. For example, I'm only uh, going to activate this when we are at the column two, that is where I have my drop down. And I'm only going to activate it when this is from the row three up, neither in row one or row two. Just row three, four, five, and until the last row. Thirdly, I'm going to use it in the table sheet. So let's see. I'm going to do a conditional. This if 
that evaluates some conditions. So the first condition is that active column has to be the column two. So I'm going to put this double equal sign to two. Then I'm going to put double ampersand that says that I'm going to concatenate or add another condition and that both conditions have to be true. The second condition will be active call greater than two. Sorry, this is not call, this is row. The last condition is that my sheet has to be the table sheet. But here I have the sheet, but I need the name of the sheet. So this is why I'm going to go to a further method called get name. And this name should be equal to table. And that's it. These are the three conditions I need to start my code. So the first thing I'm going to do is just paste the active value in the third column. So I'm going to say active cell dot offset. This method just moves the cell a number of columns to the right and a number of rows to down. What I want is that when I choose one, he goes one column to the right and that's it. So offset first needs the name, the number of rows and then the number of columns. So I'm going to move zero rows down and one column to the right. That's it. Now I'm going to set the value to this active value. Now I need this function to be activated on a simple trigger called on edit. This will make it work once I select something or change something in a cell. Don't forget the parentheses and that's it. I'm going to save and we're going to test it. Actually, first I'm going to change this name to. So let's test it. It's working. Excellent. Now the second thing I want is that when I choose another thing here, when I had cat and then I choose wolf, then I leave the cat that I had before. This is the, the whole trick of this video. So what I'm going to do is once I do this multiple selection, I need to take the value I had here and just add the new things. That's it. So I'm, I'm not only going to need the value of the active cell, but I'm going to need the value of this offset cell, this cell to the right. So I'm going to take this and save it in another variable called in my list cell. This is where I have my list, the resulting list. And now I need my list value. This will be list cell dot get value. I'm going to change this to list cell. And what I need to change is what I'm going to put in the cell. So it's not active value, but a new variable that I can put here called new list. A new list is going to be the list value. That is what I already had here, plus the new one I just added or just selected. So plus I'm going to put a comma and then add the active value. And here I'm going just to put the new list. That's it. Let's save. And let's try it. So for example, here I had dog, but if I choose cat, then it will just put the cat on top. And if I put wolf, then it's just going to put the wolf on top. And just like that. So let's try with another one. So actually now I have a problem is that when this is empty and I add a new one, then it's going to put this comma before. Okay. So I can say that when this is empty, when this list value is empty, then I won't do this. I'm just going to put the active value. So let's, let's do it here. If list value, it's empty, double equal sign, and double quotation sign, then I'm going to set a value that it's not new list, but active value. This is when I start my list. Else what we had. Okay, let's save. 
Let's try one more time. Looks good. And if I select more things, then it works well. Now I have a second problem. Let's choose some things. What if I choose a dog again? Then it'll put dog again. So you have two options that you allow duplicates or you don't allow duplicates. If you don't allow duplicates, then we need to add a few lines to the code. So if you are going to allow, then this works perfectly and you can go. But if not, then what I'm going to do first is to look for my active value in my list value. Just check if this dog is already here. So I can do, let's call this double check or check for duplicates. And this will be list value dot index of first I can convert it to a string, make sure it's a string. And then index of and let's look for my active value. If it finds something, then this is going to be a positive number zero uh, from zero up to whatever zero one two three four five. If not, it's going to return minus one. Okay, so I can put another condition here that if check for duplicates, it's greater than minus one, then I'm not going to do anything. I can leave it like this and it'll work, I think. No. So better yet, I'm going to eliminate this else, delete it, put it here, and I'm going to say that if it is minus one, if it didn't find anything, then we can go on. If not, well, you don't do anything. Let's save and again. Let's delete this and start over again. Checking dog, then wolf. Then if I try to do cat again, it won't let me. If I try to do dog again, it won't let me. This is it. If you want to delete this, you just delete it. And then you can start over again. That's it. So if you have any more suggestions, we could include it in a second part. I hope you like it. And if you like it, then you can go to my Patreon page or to practicalsheets.com where you can subscribe to find all the templates, all the codes, and very soon complete courses on all the related topics to Google Sheets, Google Apps Script, and more. Thank you so much. See you next time.